Welcome to Daily Tanya. Today is Thursday, Shivasa Betamuz, the 17th day of Tamuz. It is a fast day today. You know, on this day, this was the day where the tablets that Moses brought down from Mount Sinai, he brought the tablets on this day. There's a few number of things that happened on this day. The, the walls of Jerusalem was bridged, and a number of other things, and that is why we fast. It is a time we're asking Hashem for bringing us the Beis Amigdash again, and to see how all this negativity will turn into positivity. That is the power of the fast day. And a day like today, we should increase in giving tzedakah and studying Torah and prayer as well. So let's begin with tzedakah. Today, let tzedakah and Shemekha Revas a Sagaula. And today, we will learn about the power of the Neshama, the connection, the deep connection that we have with Hashem. That in a sense, it makes us vulnerable also. We're so dependent on God that if our life is connected to God in an intimate way, then if there is something that lacks, that interferes in that intimacy that we have for, for, with Hashem, that can affect our life literally. This is chapter 5 in the Gez Hachua that we're learning today. And to explain a little bit, what we are talking about. So, we learned in the previous chapters that the difference between God creating the Jewish people, the neshama, the soul of the Jew, and creating the rest of the world is while the rest of the world God created with speech coming from the name Elohim, the neshama of a Jew Hashem blew a neshama into the into Adam, and that is we explained come from the name Havaya, the Yud, the He, and the Vav and the He, and that is why, as we explained yesterday, although I understand it was a little deep, but basically we explained that in the soul we have similar aspects that of the ten attributes which are connected with the four letter name of Havaya. Just like there is an Hashem bringing the world into being using this four-letter name of Avaya. Now, nevertheless, al says, although the Neshama was created, it was blown into us, it comes from the deeper essence and deeper aspects of God, but in order to bring the neshama down and to connect the godly soul with the physical body, words was used. So also that part, bringing down the neshama, was used, was done through God's words, Nas Adam, let us make men. So it seems like the, the neshama now is the same as the rest of the creation. The creation was created by words, and the same thing the soul bringing down into the body was created by words. Does the Alter Rebbe know? There is different aspects of speech. There is the external aspect of speech, and there is the internal aspect of speech. External aspect of speech is the words that is spoken using the different letters. The internal aspect of speech is represented by the breath before it was defined and formed into different words. The breath itself comes from very deep within when you blow something, and the breath represents the inner aspect of speech. So the soul connecting to the body is used, the inner aspect of the speech to connect it to the body. Bring the name of Aya, the soul, which is from the name of Aya, into the, into the body, into the physical body. 
And that is indicated mainly in the last letter, hey, which hey is comes is also the way you pronounce the hey is a breath, hey. That represents the internal aspect of speech. Now, says Delta Rebbe, just like when you speak, using an, the, the analogy of speech, if you, let's say you speak to someone else and someone listens and there is a wall in between. If the wall is not very thick, if it's not soundproof, he's going to hear what you speak even if there is a wall. Because the external aspect of speech goes on and, and can be transmitted even if there is something that blocks. But the internal aspect of speech, the breath, if you put up a wall and you, and you blow, the breath is not going to go through. So this is why, says the Alter Rebbe, we, being that we are connected, that the Neshama of a tree is connected with Hashem internally, intimately, very deeply, Therefore, if, God forbid, a, a, a separation is put up between us and Hashem, it affects our life. Because our life, if our life connects with the internal aspect, it's like the breath. When you put something up as that separates, that can stop that breath from coming through. So let's see inside what the Alter Rebbe says. This is the Alter Rebbe. Bringing the godly soul down into this physical world to invest it in a human body. This process resulting from divine speech, the utterance, let us make man. So it seems like this is speech and the rest of the creation is speech as well. Says the Alter Rebbe, no, this is different. This comes from the internal aspect of the speech. It says, derives from the internal aspect, the source of speech. This is the breath of the Supreme One, that is indicated in the letter He of Avaya, the last letter of the name of God, the four-letter name of God, as discussed above. K'moi as scripture states concerning the vestiture of the soul within the body, the Torah says as follows, Vayipach be'apov nishmas chayim, vayehiya odom lenefesh chaya. He blew into his nostrils a breath of life, and man became a living creature. And when we're talking about breathing, uh, blowing into the nostrils, as we said before, and he who blows does so from within him, from his inwardness and innermost being. So this is why, yes, we come, the connection of the soul to the body is, is from speech, but it's from the innermost aspect of the speech. This then is the meaning of the verse. For God's people is a part of God. Yaakov is the rope of his inheritance. This verse implies and within the soul, there are to be found two levels. The internal aspect of the soul is the part of God. The external aspect of the soul is the rope of his inheritance. So basically, we are connected to Hashem. Externally, it is connected with a rope. What is the rope? It says, just like using an analogy of a rope that has many, many strands. 
The same thing is our connection with Hashem with many, many mitzvahs, 613 to be exact. אז דה אל תראה בפירוש כמו יחבל על דרך משהו שראי שו יהיה עוד כושר למעלה וקוצה יהיה למטה. This analogy of a rope, this upper end is bound above and the lower hand below. So to the upper end of the soul is bound above with Hashem. And its lower end is enclosed within the body. Now, says the Alter Rebbe, why does the Tere use the words of bringing in the soul into the, into the person, the words that he blew, to teach us, to teach us the, the makeup of the connection between us and Hashem. And that, in a sense, that deep, int uh, intimate connection that we have with God may be vulnerable also. This is ki ne pshat akasu, ma she kasu va yipach u lo iris lano, ke moi she al derech mashu, kshe odom nefeich leize mako. Simple meaning of the word he blew, stated in reference of the soul's vestiture within the body, is to instruct us that just as, for example, if one blows in some direction, if there is any separation or obstruction there, the, the exhaled breath will not reach that place at all. Precisely so, says the Alter Rebbe, this is the case if any obstruction, if any obstruction separates man's body from the breath of the Supreme One, concerning which scripture states he blew, then it, it doesn't go through. That means that the, the Neshama would not go through. Now the question would be, what does it mean to have a separation between us and Hashem. Can anything be separating God from the rest of the world? God is filled everywhere. al Rebbe is going to explain that really there is nothing that separates from God, but we can separate ourselves from Him by committing something which is against His will. A sin is a separation. We're basically removing ourselves from that connection. The truth is, though, that nothing material or spiritual is a barrier before him, before Hashem. For as the verse states, do I not fill heaven and earth? And there's another verse that says, Umeloi, Chola Oretz Kevoidoi. Furthermore, for scripture states, all the world is full of his glory. And also, we say, There is no place devoid of him. And it says in the Torah, In the heavens above and on earth below, there is none else, nothing else. And he fills all worlds. So what then does it mean that a person can separate himself? Hello. But rather the answer is as it is written in Isaiah. Only your sins separate you from your God. And the reason why the sin separates from Hashem, the reason is that, sin, that sins oppose the will of the Supreme One, who gives life to all. Hashem also Hashemayim As in the verse, whatever God wills, 
he has done in heaven and earth. There's no, as noted above that the supreme will is the source of the substance and the source of the sustenance issuing from the tetragrammaton, the name of Hashem, and is represented in the thorn atop the letter Yud. As we mentioned yesterday, that the Yud has a thorn on top. And that little dot represents something which is above Chachma. The Yud is the dot, which represents Chachma, the beginning of everything. But the thorn represents the will, which the will of Hashem, which is above everything, which is the source of the Chachma and the source of everything. And now the Alter Rebbe explains the, the concept of Karet. And what happens if a person violates a mitzvah, which the Torah says leads to excision, cutting off the soul? That's exactly what it is. That it cuts off the soul, meaning it cuts off the source of life. And basically, there are certain, as he used a metaphor of the rope with many strands. So, which represents the body that has many organs, which the mitzvahs are represented in different organs. But there are organs that are vital organs. If God forbid that organ is being cut off, it cuts off the life. There are other organs that are not as vital. Nevertheless, it can weaken the connection of life. This then is the meaning of excision. The rope drawn from the final A in the letter in the four letter name of God is severed, cut off. As a result, the soul clothed within the body is unable to receive vitality from its source in that divine name. During those times when the Jewish people received their vitality only from the side of holiness, as for example during the period of the temple, as the Al-Tabra will say in the next chapter, the lack of this life force led to physical death. That's what we're going to discuss next chapter that this is the reason why people really literally died back in the time of the temple because in those days their connection was an intimate open revealed connection with Hashem and therefore when you're so intimately connected then you can be vulnerable because as soon as you turn away from that intimate connection the actual life which was your life from that deeper connection is severed. And that's why people died. And al Rebbe is going to explain why today is different. As the verse says in Parshas Emmer, a portion of Emmer, that soul shall be cut off from before my face. I am God. From my face. Rebbe, my face represents the innermost part of Hashem. The, ex- the expression chosen in is from before my face, meaning the soul is excised from the innermost aspect of godliness, the tetragrammaton, that the four letter names of Hashem. That's what happens when a person violates a vital mitzvah, which the Torah says, is the consequence is karet being cut off. What about the other sins that do not incur excision? They do cause at least a defect in the soul. In the sense of a defect or a nick, the word pagam means a defect, means also like a nick that invalidates a, a blade for ritual slaughter. That represents something which is 
a defect which is causes a weakening of the connection between Hashem. As with a defective blade, the sin causes something to be lacking in the rope-like flow of life force from the tetragrammaton, four letter names of Hashem, downwards to the soul, as is now explained. This is analogous to a thick rope woven of 613 thin strands. So to the rope of the downward flow mentioned above is comprised of the 613 mitzvahs. Each mitzvah begins I'm sorry, each mitzvah being an individual thin strand. When one violates one of them, God forbid, a thin strand consisting of that particular commandment is severed. Should an individual violate many commandments, God forbid, then many strands are severed. And the rope is grievously weakened. Sins punishable by excision or death by divine agency cause the entire rope to be severed, heaven forfend. That's why whenever we ask, I offer people to put into fill in, sometimes I get an answer, oh, I'm not religious, I'm not doing this. And then I say to them, on the contrary, first of all, we're all Jewish, it doesn't make a difference. But using this example that we are connected with God with 613 strands, a rope, if we're, if we're not doing other mitzvahs, at least let's be connected with this rope, with this strand. Another strand, another strand. Every mitzvah connects our connection to Hashem, makes it stronger. Now the Alter Rebbe says, so if someone, back again, talking about the days of the temple, when people were committed those sins that the consequence is being cut off, how could they live? They said that they die by the age of 50 or 60, but how could they live until then? If, they, if their rope is cut off, how could they continue to live? And the answer that al Rabbi gives is because there still is left a remnant of life. Just like there is this... Uh, this creature that um, a kind of lizard that when it comes to a certain extreme situation it would it would uh, remove its tail and the tail is cut off from its life but it's still the tail still uh, looks like it's alive it still has some remnants of life to it but of course it, uh, we are not connected uh, compared to that completely because after all a Jew even after being cut off, can also do teshuva that we'll talk in the next chapter. So, in any case, says the Alter Rebbe, Achkam bechayiv kores umisa, nishar adayin bo yereshimu minafshir likis. However, even if one has incurred excision or death, there yet remains an impression within him of his divine soul. Al deize yochal lichyo esad nun esam achshon avalo yoysa. And through this, he may live until 50 in the case of excision or 60 years in the case of death by divine agency, but not more. Then the Alter Rebbe says that it says elsewhere in the name of the Arizal that the person who is being cut off, he still has the life of the soul, which is the encompassing part of the soul. And it seems that this is what gives the person life rather than the remnants of the life of his soul, which because uh, the soul has the inner part of the soul and there is the, the, the encompassing part of the soul. Generally speaking, the we, we mentioned about these five levels of the soul. The three lo lower levels, Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama is connected with the body, Nefesh is connected with the action, Ruach is the emotions, and Neshama is the intellect. But then there is Chai Yechida, the 
those parts of the soul that are connected in, in a very encompassing way, that says the Alter Rebbe gives life, but not, not talking about the physical life. It's not connected with the physical life. It is connected with the more the spiritual part of the person. That's the statement attributed to the Arizal that the Makif, a transcendent level of life force, enters such an individual and so on. So though unable to receive vitality from the internal aspect of godliness, he's still able to receive vitality from this transcendent and encompassing level of godliness. If this is indeed so, why can he live, why can he not live longer than 50 or 60 years? And al explains that this encompassing life of the soul is giving life, but not the spirit, physical life. This is irrelevant to the life of the physical body, which cannot survive once there remains no vestige of the divine soul. And applies only until 50 years. Meaning the transcendent level is also found within an individual only so long as he's able to remain alive by virtue of the impression of the divine soul that is still within this body, or, or to the contemporary period as will be noted. This al will explain next chapter that today, the fact is people continue to live, even if even people that violated such mitzvahs, they still continue to live. That will explain in the next chapter how this is, and we because today we don't have that internal, intimate connection with Hashem as in the time of the Beis HaMikdash. This is the end of today's shir. We shall continue tomorrow, Bezat Hashem, have a wonderful day, an easy and meaningful fast. All the best.